Hi, my name is Jane. I am an independent data visualization designer based in Toronto. Today, I'm going to review a portfolio. I got a request from John Baker from LinkedIn, and uh, he asked me to look over his website and just give him some feedback. So I actually suggested that maybe I make a video about it, and that way he can actually see a video of me reacting to his site. I think that's more useful than just giving text-based review. And also, we could share this information widely so anyone else looking to improve their portfolio can benefit from this. Okay, so disclaimer, I'm not an expert in looking at portfolios or anything like that. Um, I've never recruited people in the past before. Also, I think John has a different background than me. Even though we're both sort of in the data visualization analytics field, it's still quite different. So I don't have a lot of technical knowledge of what he does. That could be a good thing and that I have a fresh perspective of it and I can give him a true first impression. That can also be bad because I can't really comment on how he can be better presenting in that aspect, but I'll do my best. So, And so I asked him about his goals for his website and he listed four. So the first was to attract employers, so get a job. Second was to help people. Uh, I'm guessing in terms of peers, uh, people like him, maybe help spread information, um, teach the new skills. The third was landing freelance work. And the fourth was to educate himself. So I'm guessing maybe this, you know, maybe he's writing things or creating, putting things together. That way he learns things in the process. So I think that's not really a goal. It's sort of kind of do it just as a result of having a website. But the first three, I think, are the ones we can talk about. So when I first look at his website, it's very clean, right? There's no distractions, which is interesting. Um, my, hi, my name is John Baker. Okay, your name is good. I am a problem solver that operates at the intersection of business and technology. I'm trying to see, like, if you're trying to uh, attract an employer, I think this is a good thing to read, but it was important to really use that term carefully. So say, for instance, if you have an employer, who, a, a recruiter who is not a technical recruiter, say they don't know anything about your field, um, they would try to find people that matches the term of the job title. So if you know what job title you're looking for, you should reflect that here somehow. This is quite important when you think about SEO, search engine optimization. So some people find me through Google and on my website, I put data visualization design, right? So if say for instance, a recruiter wants to find a data visualization designer, you should really put that here so that it, they can, you know, that term gets matched to what they search up on Google. They're not gonna search a problem solver. That's not a job title. So if you're looking for someone who is um, an, an employer, this doesn't make sense. But if it's like a client, clients, um, usually a lot of times they find people through their network. So this might not be a big problem. So can you see why the goal really matters and you have to be very specific? Um, so I think John, please consider uh, changing this and, um, think more about what kind of terms are used. Okay operates at the intersection of business and technology. Okay, that's, that's a very common intersection, but um, you might wanna be more specific. It's always good to be more specific if possible. Learn more. Okay, good, it goes right down. Nice, there's a photo of you. This is really good. Lots of people don't put photos of themselves, which is bad. It's always good to connect with people through a photo. I use data analytics, business decision intelligence, and visual solve business problems. Okay. You have like a case study here, which talked about kind of how you start data visualization and the value you see in it. Um, I'm not sure if there is a way to link this to an actual portfolio piece where I could go through that and you can talk a little bit more. Maybe you can show some images of what you've done. I know there's a lot of issues with in our field where that we can't show our work publicly because if you're working with a company, you just can't show the data. Um, but I think it would be interesting if you were able to give more insight into this to show how you're a problem solver. So how, you know, I'm trying to think of what makes most sense. So say for instance, if you can't share images because you know, data, whatever, maybe you can share um, a video or maybe write a blog post, just kind of talk about your process in a general sense maybe. And the reason I'm suggesting this is to give me a deeper idea of your impact. So if I'm not, if I'm a recruiter and I don't really have much information about your field, I have a very service level understanding of it. Um, you wanna be able to speak to me from a perspective of someone who doesn't know any anything that you mentioned. My work, biodiversity in national parks, I interpreted da, 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 from the Black Park Server. Okay, view project. Okay, it goes to GitHub. I don't understand anything here. I'm very confused. So this is where it's good that I don't have the technical knowledge that you have, where if I'm a recruiter, 
because you mentioned that's one of your priorities, which is get a job. None of this makes sense to me. This is complete gibberish. I'm just going to abandon it right away and not think about it. I'm going to keep moving on, right? So what I recommend you to do is if you can create an actual um, portfolio page or a case study page. Do you have a case study page? You don't, it looks like this is just a one page website. Okay. Yeah. You don't have multiple pages. Okay. So if you're limited by say the type of website you have where it's just one page scrolling through and you're just linking it out, um, I think you should try to make this more friendly for people who are not very tech, like high tech, right? They're, they sort of have a surface level understanding of technology because this is this, first of all, the way you have presented this is very scientific. It's like a scientific paper. No one likes to read them at all, not even for fun, right? So I think maybe there's some of you who like to read this for fun. Just saying, I'm talking about recruiters, right? But if if you if you were to present this to a recruiter, you want to help them understand how what you do matches um, the job posting they're looking for. So they're gonna look up the job posting and they're gonna say, does he have this? How can you help them quickly make that connection? So a really good way to do this and approach this for you, John, is to maybe look up like five different job postings that you really want to be able to, um, you want you want to get a job for. So look them up in your area um, and look at the terms they use and look for the things they look for and use that to help you outline how to put your projects together as a case study. Uh, okay, I'm just going to use my own website as an example. So I'm trying to think of one that would help. I've shared this one, History of Amendments, before with people, and people seem to really appreciate um, some aspects of it. So what I've done is I have the title. Uh, I have a quick summary here. I have an image of you know what, sort of what it looks like as a final result. So for you, it would just be the charts you make, right? Just to sort of attract them to it. Um, I have a quick brief. So I talked about what was being solved. I talked about the target audience. I talked about the key objective. So I can I link them to like an actual I think PDF of the final piece. They can just look at it. Right, you don't have to be very high tech. You can just create PDFs as you want. Um, there's many ways to do this. And I actually have a video. Okay, so I'm dubbing over myself here because the video started playing and it's really loud when I was editing the video. But what I'm trying to say is people really appreciate passive content like video. It just makes things easier for clients to consume. It's a little overkill, but I think it's really useful if you have the time to do it. And there's a lot of images here just kind of showing the thing. And there's process, right? So I just kind of show some sketches. I don't go too in detail, but I just show them, oh, there's a lot of work involved. The, the, the high level thing I wanted people to understand was, oh, there's actually a lot of work involved. She took the time, she really thought about it, right? So I think in your case, you have to still this and make it more readable for a recruiter who doesn't have technical knowledge. So reshape this a little bit. Here's a couple things you could do. You could do, you can do it as a video form if you're comfortable doing that. Um, you can make it into a post. So if you go on Medium or even LinkedIn, I think Medium maybe is the best one. There's lots of people who I've seen who do like portfolio pieces on LinkedIn. Sorry, sorry, Medium. You can do it on lead, Medium. Just you know, it's really easy to to create a new a new story, and you can just upload images and talk about your process very briefly. I think that's more effective than linking to GitHub. Something more digestible. Okay, so you have one project here. So let's look at the scope of your work. You have three projects. Okay, that's a really good number. I don't think you need more or less than that. You should feature projects that you want to find work in. So if this is what you want to go, I think that's good. And then contact, let's solve problems together, email me. Um, okay, one thing I would like to know is your location. I This really like drives me crazy. Whenever I'm looking at other people's sites, just in general, where are you? <laughs> Because this is a big problem for me, say, for instance, if I, um, you know, if I'm looking to work with someone or if I'm looking to hire for any reason, I want to know if they're in my country or if they're anywhere accessible to me. First of all, for time zone, there's also legal issues with taxes and things like that. Right. So if employer needs to quickly know where you're based, I think that's important to mention where you're from. So you can mention it in the footer. You don't have to get really complicated. Just say, you know, based in whatever. I think that's helpful. I think that's good to mention. Did you mention that in about me? No, that's not. Maybe you could just mention it briefly in about me, but also add in the footer. Let's see. Do you mention, does it mention your, so what I would do if I was trying to find out who you are. Okay. You're from New York, right? So I find out there, but I think it's just still helpful to have it a little sooner. Okay. That's it. I hope that was helpful and informative. Thanks so much for your question and see you in the next one. Bye.